Did you ever think it's weird that Guzzlord looks a bit like a corrupted Zygarde? Like, they are both mainly black with a tiny spiky head on top of a big torso head with a zigzaggy mouth. They got, like, Hydra head hands, they're dragon type, and you find Guzzlord and Zygarde in the same place, Resolution Cave in Alola. And when asked about their similarities, James Turner, the designer of Guzzlord, said, Ah, that's something I think I can't go into too much. They do look alike, though. Huh. Smiley face. That's there as if to say, yes, you're onto something, but I cannot contractually tell you. And I mean, wow. They are sort of polar opposites, too. Zygarde is the guardian of the ecosystem, protector of nature and all that, and Guzzlord is a total destructor, constantly devouring entire forests and mountains. Perhaps it's a parallel universe's Zygarde that fell to the dark side. Hence it being Dark Dragon instead of Ground Dragon type. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I like Ultra Beasts. Ultra Beasts are cool. Pokemon from other dimensions, from Ultra Space. If you think about it, Pokemon used to go by the name Magical Creatures, and Ultra Beast is kind of just another way of saying the same thing. It's a beast, it's a creature, with magical powers or ultra powers. I like it. We are explaining every Ultra Beast right now, and this video is dedicated to the Draconic Duo, Guzzlord and Naganadel. And Poipol is here also. Um, but let's start with Guzzlord. It's like a Tengen Tapagurin Lagan supervillain trash compactor conveyor belt crab abomination. Or it's like a green crab with a tiny hat of another crab on top. Let's start there because that's clearly the most interesting aspect of it. So hey, over the last year I've promoted Helix mattresses quite a lot and this is another sponsored segment but I want to tell you a story. I have a friend, we'll call him Kurt. He doesn't watch my videos because he's some nerd that doesn't like Pokemon and he super broke his spine in a motorcycle accident a couple years ago and only recently gained the ability to walk again. Anyway, he was visiting and we were talking about it and he said the very first thing he bought after the accident was a super nice mattress that is seriously like the best thing I own now. Ooh, a fancy one. What kind of mattress? I asked. Oh, a Helix mattress, the Dusk Lux, which is great because... And I stopped him and proceeded to recite one of my sponsorships to him, which he thought was hilarious. I said, I too love my Helix mattress, which was chosen for me and my wife five years ago through their quick and easy sleep quiz, which matches you or you and a partner to the perfect mattress. It quickly arrived in an easy to move box and the whole thing was super simple to set up and worry free thanks to their 100 night sleep trial. That's right, more than three months to make sure you love your mattress and if you don't, they'll pick it up for you and give you a full refund. And the 10 year warranty and flexible financing options make it even more worry free so you can sleep soundly, especially with the Lux's cooling cover. Oh, I love the cooling cover, it breathes. My cat Sasha does too. Uh, that, that, that is love the cooling cover. Uh, well, I guess she breathes too. So if you find that your sleep is lacking or you just straight up need a new mattress, visit helixsleep.com slash Loxton to get up to $200 off of your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Extra soft and plushy. So fun. Oh, I wish I had your link. I wish you did too. So don't be like Kurt. Go to helixsleep.com slash Loxton and save now. Also, don't break your back. It's not, it's not good for your health. Anyway, so why the green crab? Well, every Ultra Beast is based on both alien invasion tropes and on invasive species, which are animals that reach an ecosystem they are not native to, and they wreak havoc. The Alola region, which is based on Hawaii, really is the perfect region for them. Hawaii has a lot of history with invasive species, as islands tend to be the most susceptible to their damage, and Hawaii is like the most island of islands. The green crab is considered one of, if not the most dangerous invasive species in the marine environment, especially in terms of the damage they cause due to their voracious appetites. Just like Guzzlord, they are native to the waters around Western Europe and have since taken over the waters along both US coasts, as well as Southern Australia, Argentina, and South Africa, and they've recently been spotted in various places all over the world, including Hawaii. Like Guzzlord, they are dangerous to the ecosystem because of what they eat. They aggressively hunt prey willy-nilly, primarily juvenile salmon and other crabs, which is of course a massive threat to the fishing and crabbing industries. And when not actively hunting, they destroy eelgrass and other sea grasses that those larval fish use to hide from all of their predators, putting them at even greater risk of great population loss. And despite being called the green crab, they aren't always green. They are often just dark, with mottled bits of yellow, and often have a lot of yellow on their 
carapace around their mouths, just like Guzzlord. And on the off chance their mouth area isn't yellow, that's because it's orange, just like the Mon's shiny color. And also, compared to most other crabs, they are spiky and are identified by their five large spikes behind their eyes, just like Guzzlord. But clearly Guzzlord is not just a crab, I mean, look at it. Plus, we know Guzzlord was designed by Pokemon designer James Turner, who had this to say about it. Guzzlord is supposed to be something of an abomination or a dog's dinner, as we Brits say, and so I gave him messy details like those little wings. I was thinking of Lovecraft's monsters and a Douglas Adams character called Agrajag. Ah, there we go. Alien abominations are another big sci-fi trope. I still can't get the thing out of my head. But Agrajag from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is an interesting inspiration. In short, it is a being that repeatedly reincarnates into different things, each thing being killed by the main character Arthur throughout the story. These forms can be things as monstrous as a big, gross, mutant bat, or as simple as an ant or a fly that Arthur happens to kill accidentally. And well, well, I definitely see Guzzlord in some of these depictions and descriptions. Perhaps then it truly is an abomination of a reincarnated Zygarde. Either way though, it's an antagonist of sorts, so dark type is fitting. In fact, let's talk more about that dark typing. Guzzlord has big anime villain vibes, especially mecha anime. You see mecha with facial features on the torso below the actual head in anime all the time. Gurren Lagann, Gai King, Voltron side characters, and even some Gundam. And often it's the antagonists in these series that have the spikiest and the spookiest mecha. And heck, even the main Gurren Lagann mech belonged to the antagonists originally. And being dark type is pretty inherent in being a villain Pokemon. The type does, roughly, translates to evil type in its original Japanese. And I mean like, Malamar is your perfect example of a comic book villain too. It's dark type instead of being water type despite being a squid. Clearly, that's important. This torso face trope being mainly associated in anime with mecha may be why Guzzlord has a few mechanical appearing parts too, hence the conveyor belt tongue, bringing what it puts into its mouth deeper into its trash compactor black hole-like throat. And black hole-like it is. If you wanted to completely destroy a planet, all you'd have to do is send a few dozen Guzzlords and wait. It cares not for anything but eating, pulling in two more alien tropes. The first is simple, the aliens unleashing their possibly genetically engineered monstrous wildlife on to Earth to deal with the Earthlings, think like Pacific Rim. But the other trope is just the aliens with absolutely no regard for the life on this planet and will destroy it for the greater good of their own species. Just total uncaring destruction, like a kid kicking down an anthill, no care in the world. And such is the fate of the Earth in the previously mentioned Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, the ones with Agrajag. In it, the Earth is demolished for a space highway. And what do you do with all that planetary rubble? You put it in a planetary trash compactor, of course, or a nearby black hole. Which brings us to Guzzlord's shiny, it's super white. Theoretically, there are white holes somewhere out there which function as the polar opposite of a black hole. Rather than nothing escaping and everything getting sucked into it, things escape from it and are pushed away and nothing can enter. Then the lips being orange and yellow could just be because of those green crabs, but it could also work as a reference to cautionary tape on heavy machinery like demolition equipment or trash compactors. And come to think of it, it's tail is like a mace, a sort of twisted wrecking ball, perhaps, to help it initially destroy buildings that are too big for it to just bite. Gotta break the skyscraper into fun size bits. Now why is it a dragon? Well, because dragons are inherently primordial powerhouses, extremely powerful and dangerous, and in many mythologies and even modern religions are associated with space or ultimate destruction. Dragons are apocalyptic even, and evil, all perfectly fitting of every aspect of Guzzlord. But here's a question, why is it paired up with Naganadel in the trading card game? What do they share? Well, the dragon typing for one, but it, is that it? Well, let's go over Poipal and Naganadel now and see what they're all about. Poipal and Naganadel are weird among the group of Ultra Beasts, which are already kind of weird to begin with. But first off, they are the only Ultra Beasts to evolve, and they are also the only ones not to have a base stat total of 570. Like, Poipal not having that makes sense, it's not fully evolved, but even Naganadel has a base stat total of just 540, making it more comparable to fully evolved starter Pokémon, which tend to be in the 530 to 540 range. Oh. 
well, this actually makes this Pokedex entry make perfect sense. Well enough liked to be chosen as a first partner in its own world. Okay, so Poiple is a starter Pokemon in Ultra Megalopolis, which is the part of Ultra Space that it comes from. Neat! But now, what exactly are they? I mean, Poiple looks very much like your classical Roswell Gray alien, but what invasive animals are they based on? Well, if we look at the wide hips and small waist of both Mon in the line, and the fact that they shoot sticky venom out of syringes that appear to resemble stingers, it brings to mind bees and wasps. I mean, look at Naganadel's shiny, that screams bee louder than I do! <laughs> bees! Bees have waists about as wide as their hips and are often fuzzy little guys, whereas wasps are known for having hips and heads way wider than their middles, their femme fatales thick in all the right places. Like Naganadel. And now it's time to learn about the difference between social and solitary wasps. Uh, I, I don't know why we're doing a whole audience bit. Uh, the, the, the difference is social wasps live in, like, hives, and uh, there are plenty of other wasps who live as loners. Uh, and, and Poipol and Naganadel are definitely social. As we see in the anime episode, The Shape of Love to Come, we see that their hives contain one Naganadel and hundreds of Poipol, similar to these wasps who live in big groups with one queen and hundreds of smaller workers. Also, if we look at the shape of the hive itself, we see that it's very reminiscent of paper wasp nests, which tend to get bumpier and bumpier as they get bigger. These wasps chew up plant matter like wood and mix it with their saliva to make the paper they build their nests out of. Some species of paper wasps even secrete a sticky, silk-like substance that they use to bind the fibers instead of saliva, like how the liquid that Naganadel fires from its stinger is also immensely adhesive. Bunch of Poiple are doing like arts and crafts with like paper and glue and they're making a pretty picture. Oh, look at that. That's so nice, Poiple. Oh, what is the, what's the other Poiple doing? Oh, I can't, I can't show that. Poiple. No, I'll get demonetized. How do you even know what that is? Clearly, Naganadel and Poiple have great reason for being super glue wasps, because some wasps make their own glue, and thus Poiple's head and Naganadel's abdomen resemble a small tube of super glue, which often come with extra wide, grippy little grips, and often have extra long syringe-like dispensing ends, so you can put the glue precisely where it needs to be. After all, it's so adhesive that you want as little mess as possible, which is likely where Naganadel accuracy comes in. It can supposedly hit a target from over six miles away. If only I could be so accurate. I always get at least a little super glue on my fingers. Oh no. Go back to the hives. Oh, I'm allergic to the stuff. Wasp hives are typically attached to a tree by a stalk, but looking at the hive of Naganadel and Poipol, we see it stick up out of the ground by a stalk, but that could very well just connect back to the fact that Naganadel looks like you took a Poipol and flipped it upside down, which is all also why, fun fact, Naganadel's brain is actually in its abdomen rather than its head, because that's where its brain was when it was a poiple. What an odd evolution, really. Weirdo alien organ placements. Many wasps are venomous too, hence the poison type here. Some wasps use it to inject their prey and paralyze them. Others use it defensively with a chemical concoction built to destroy cells for just creating pain, which causes the attacker to flee. And some female paper wasps secrete a chemical that repels ants, and they squirt it all over the stalk that connects the nest to the tree to try and prevent ants from coming in and eating their babies. And the ants don't want to touch the poison. It's gross. Uh, gross like this next string of words I really, really don't want to say. The, the tarantula hawk wasps. Ugh. The biggest wasp. So it definitely deserves to become a dragon type in Pokemon through that alone. But to make them worse, their sting, especially that of P. Grossa specifically, is one of the most painful stings of all insects. The venom itself isn't too damaging or toxic, but it specifically tricks your nerves into sending this signal to the brain. Hey, hey brain, hey, guess I got a delivery for you. It is uh, the, the maximum amount of pain we can possibly experience. Uh, here you go. I hope you like it. And we're not even done. These creatures also lay their eggs inside of hosts that the baby eventually eats from the inside out. They're quite literally like plenty of iconic aliens, like xenomorphs. I mean, they're THE iconic alien. And this is also something Ichneumon wasps do, which like perfectly resemble Naganadel's shiny coloration. And interestingly, their preferred egg hosts are bugs who are about to metamorphize. So like a caterpillar or a grub that is about to make a cocoon. Who'd have 
think of it. Maybe that's why it likes Guzzlord. Guzzlord's basically just the world's biggest, ugliest, very hungry caterpillar. And being based on Agrajack, who's constantly changing into many different forms, like, like a metamorphosis. No, 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 maybe this is too much of a stretch. I gotta, <laughs> gotta glue myself back to reasonability. <sighs> So what's up with Poipole? Haven't talked about it too much yet. Well, its name sounds like purple, which is accurate, the little dude sure does purple, and its Japanese name is Bivenom, which could be coming from Bebe, the French word for baby, and Venom, or is literally be venom because, like, yeah. The Gonadel's etymology is pretty interesting too. It's a combination of Naga, a race of half-serpent, half-human beings in Hindu beliefs, and is also one of the words in Japanese for dragons, and could also pull from German for needle. And then its Japanese name, Agu Yon is a combination of ago, meaning jaw or barb, and yon, meaning four. It may also involve ago, Italian for needle, aguilon, French for stinger, English dragon, or yon, which is Korean for dragon. In short, it's a needle stinger dragon. Wow, who'd have, who'd have thunk it? Uh, let's get back to Poipol. Poipol is a sneaky little guy, sneaky and fun-loving, but not malicious, though it cackles wildly as it sprays its opponents with poison from the needles on its head. That's fairly tame for most poison types and ultra beasts, but as I said, it is canonically well liked in the world that it comes from, which, given this, along with its nature and looks, definitely makes me think of more child friendly sci fi alien tropes. You know, the, the alien movies where the nice alien meets and befriends a kid. There's no real ill intent at all, though they may be a little mischievous at times since they're young and don't know about Earth life and how to be super nice. They're, they're learning. And then, considering that nature, commonly associated with the trope, I then start thinking a little bit about fantasy gremlin, goblin, or fairy things. You know, do you kind of get those vibes with Poipol? Maybe it's even like a generic kobold. Traditionally, kobolds are just weird looking little small people, like little goblins. But the more modern interpretation of kobolds, mostly popularized by Dungeons and Dragons, has them as lizard-like little dudes who live in groups who all worship or are indentured to a dragon. They guard the cave it lives in, they add to its horde, and otherwise just do the dragon's bidding. Much like the Poipol in Ash's Poipol's vision, all living under one Nagonadel who is clearly in charge in some way. And it's not only just some sort of queen bee, because it's also literally a dragon. Plus, you know, a tiny little kobold-esque bee alien evolving into a dragon-like bee alien just makes perfect sense, I hope. Uh, but also in the anime, Nagonadel are able to telepathically communicate with humans and show them visions of the past, which are both common abilities for dragons in many mythologies and folklores. But okay, we've talked forever, and I've not yet mentioned which invasive species they may be based on. And that's partially because, well, there are just so many gosh darn invasive bees and wasps. Honestly, we really could just say it's a wasp and be 100% accurate. But at least if we limit our scope to just Hawaii, Hawaii only has one invasive wasp, the Erythrina gall wasp, which similar to the wasp I shall no longer name, inject their babies into hosts. But at least this time the host is a leaf. I just didn't bring them up earlier because, well, they don't really look anything like Nagonadel, other than it too being a wasp. And they don't do the glue stuff either. And actually, none of those other wasps that I did mention are considered invasive anywhere. So perhaps, just like how Poipol and Nagonadel are the only ultra beasts to evolve, and they're the only ones to have different stat totals, and are the only ones considered a starter in their home world, maybe they also break the ultra beast rule about being partially based on invasive species. After all, in the games, rather than it directly invading Alola, you have to go into their home world in order to get one. Similarly, in the adventures manga, Poipol hangs out with the ultra recon squad as they go around doing their ultra reconning. Poipols don't invade Alola on their own. So I can definitely see there being no specific invasive species being referenced here, making it, once again, stand out from the crowd of the other Ultra Beasts. And that's heckin' cool. Even if it doesn't really help us explain why Naganadel and Guzzlord are such close friends in the card game. Other than, I guess, they're both dragon type? Dragons are normally hate each other, but maybe they, they don't. Uh, well, let me know down below what you think. Why are they friends? And be sure to check out our other Ultra Beast videos. We're explaining them all. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.